everybody and welcome to part three of episode twenty four uh As always Tightrope Rally. As always, always part is. three is Countdowns. Countdowns. Exactly. Spin 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 out to you. So the network has not had any countdowns recently. Nope, they won't have none until November. Now that is crazy. So they want to drag in, you know, because they're not right. waiting October to do the new Raw. I mean, the Monday Night Wars. Finally, and they have that in November and then whatever else. Exactly. So, so we start with the top ten storylines that turn into real life shoots. There you go. Number ten, Mickey James having the hots for John Cena. Apparently, they did have a little tawdry affair. Yeah. CM Punk attacking Jeff Hardy over drugs. Well, how true. true that was. Number eight, booking a fake death only for someone to really die. That would be the CM Punk and... Not CM Punk. Why did I say CM Punk again? Because CM Punk's up there. He's right there. That's yes, what confused what me. Was, yeah. I'm tired of people. Anyway, that had to do with Vince McMahon blowing up, right, in the, and then, yes. in the daggum yes. limo, and then Chris Benoit went stupid. Yes. Anyway, continue. Uh, Shawn Michaels having to retire in 96, only to have to retire in for 96. real in 98. Yes, you said 96 first. Oh. 97. 97, people. 97. I'm saying different things. You are saying different things. Number six, Michaels versus Hart on TV, turning into a real-life fist fight backstage. They hated each other for a they while. They did. And then they hugged it out about 12 years later. Number five, CM Punk's pipe bomb comes true. There you go. Number four, Chris Benoit's affair with woman. And then they got married. Yeah. Number three, Hogan and Savage feuding over Elizabeth. You got lustful eyes for Elizabeth. I see it. I see it. Yes. So stupid. Number two, Austin versus Man Feud becomes real. Well, that's why he took his ball at home, probably. That's right. Probably so, because they were best of buds. Supposed to be. And number one, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon marriage. There you go. So they fake it and then get ready to get married. There you go. And they got divorced on TV too. Well, that ain't gonna happen because he loves his job. That's right. So we're gonna go on to Do You Remember These WWE Superstars? We did one before WCW, WCW Superstars. Now, do you remember these WWE superstars? Number 10, Abe Knuckleball Schwartz. Isn't that guy from Brooklyn? I think he's from Brooklyn. There you go. Also known as the Brooklyn Brawler, if you didn't know and that. Steve Lombardi. There you go. Number 9, Freddie Joe Floyd. That oh, one threw me for a loop a little bit. Freddie Joe Floyd. Was. Tracy Smothers. Tracy Smothers. That's so sad they had to do that to him. Number 8, Gunner Scott. They told him, go out there and act like Benoit. Oh, and you're fired because you act like Benoit. <laughs> That's some more Stupid. WWE logic. So. And he was also Brent Albright. They should have kept him as Brent Albright. They should have kept him as Brent Albright. And I wish right. he would have done more for WWE and moved on and done more, like done Ring of Honor and things like that. But I think he's actually inactive as a wrestler now. Which is sad because he was a, a wonderful wrestler. He did good. Uh, number seven. Oh, a good one. Battle Cat. Yes. Still a Claws mystery and on who thing, mask, fur hands. Yes. Yeah. Still a mystery on who who did the Battle Cat gimmick. Fur hands. Are number good. six. T. L. Hopper, who was supposed to be a dead gum um, plumber. Plumber. That's the word for it. And yes. he was actually a Dirty White Boy in Montgomery, Alabama. In Continental. For Continental Championship Wrestling. He went outside Bullet Bob Armstrong's head a few times with some fist. There you go. No plungers. No plungers at that point. Number five, Beaver Cleavage. Oh, the poor head, the head, uh, the head uh, thrasher, <laughs> head something, thrasher, somebody. Anyway, what were they called? <laughs> oh it's horrible. Mosh and Thrasher, the head bangers. That's it. The head bangers. He was also known as Chaz. Uh, yeah. With D'Lo as the Lodo. That was terrible. Too. Yeah. Once the head bangers went away, it was, that was his pretty, career was done. <laughs> yep. Thrasher, I believe, got injured where he couldn't wrestle. That's what happened. Number four, uh, who doesn't remember this guy? Dino Bravo. The Canadian. Canadian strongman. I mean, yes. he, was a, he was a wonderful wrestler, and then he got, I believe he got killed with a, a drive-by happened. Yes, he sit in his house. Yep. Sit in his house and got stray bullets. Sad. Number three, Al Perez. Now, he could have done real well in the WWE, but... He did well in other promotions. Oh, yeah. NWA and World Class. But they really never gave him a great push. Sad. Didn't he get managed by Gary Hart at one point? He Not did. WWE, right? No. So, so you go. Number two, Scotty Goldman. And I'm so tired, I'm trying to remember his other name. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> are, you I, try, are you trying to remember his other name? I really am. I, now that you said I can't think of it. Okay, oh, good job. Good job. I know he's Sam Punk's buddy. 
Colt and he, Cabana. And he may get to get another job. Colt Cabana. They yeah. have tried him out as a commentator. I don't know what happened with him. They need to do something with him. something with him. But anyway, yeah, Scotty Goldman was a horrible Jewish name for him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they changed it. <laughs> From Colt Cabana, I think that was good enough. It, it was. was, it was. It's just so sad that they it's just sad. another screw job. Exactly. Number one is great. <laughs> Number one is great. If you said uh, Johnny Polo, you would have never thought of Raven. No, and I think he had another name too, Johnny something else. Scotty Flamingo. That's it, Scotty. Scotty Flamingo. Yeah, Raven would have so kicked Scotty Flamingo in WCW, right? Yes, Raven would have kicked Scotty Flamingo and Johnny Polo's ass in yes. one shot. I mean, you talk about completely different, that, but that's what Paul Heyman did. Because Sandman used to not be the beer drinker. No, he was a surfer dude. He was dude. a surfer dude. Yes. Thank God they changed that gimmick. Could you imagine? Yeah, oh, seeing that, seeing those... That was cut off. That's horrible. Top suits for uh, like scuba divers, but yes. it's for surfers. Yeah, you're saying that's Sandman? Oh, it goodness. made him into a beer drinking, cane throwing person, and it, it helped a lot. Yeah, we got the next, we got the top 10 stars you won't believe never, ever, ever headline WrestleMania. That's right. Number 10, the drug boy, Jeff right. Hardy. He could have headlined a good match. Number 9 is Kane. I'm not really surprised by that. If they were high on the Undertaker, they were. Last couple of WrestleManias, he would have headlined. Him and Undertaker would have headlined one. Number eight, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. He's good enough to headline WCW pay-per-views, right. but not WWE. But he also had the greatest WrestleMania match of all time, WrestleMania yes. 3. Right? Still yeah. to this day. Macho Man Randy Savage. Number seven, technically? No, it's technically. not. No, it's not. Technically. No. He was in the main event of the first WrestleMania as he accompanied Mr. T and Hogan to the ring to make sure Cowboy Bob Orton didn't get involved. That didn't help very much because Cowboy Bob Orton got involved. Yes. Good for you, Superfly. Uh, number six, five time, five time, five time, Book T. Does that really shock you? It doesn't shock me. No. Even they wrestled Hunter, Hunter beat his butt. You thought they would make it. But they put I, something I, else I, in the I, main I, event. I'll have to look back and see what was the main event when he took on Hunter for the, for the world title. Probably the other title in the main event. I think so, but still. Was that when Brock was around? It might have been when Brock was doing his thing. I'll have to look back and say. Number five, Mr. Perfect. And he is perfect. He could have done some main events. But if they would have done it right. Yes, in between five and seven and nine, one, or in those areas, five to ten, or five, between five and twelve, they could have, perfect could have headlined one of the WrestleManias. Yep. Uh, number four, Eddie Guerrero. Yep. Same. The only reason he didn't, because... Uh, Hunter and Sean and somebody else. Was oh, that Eddie. other that other guy we can't talk yes. about. Yes, but he he did a great match with um, Kurt Angle that year. He did. Yes, kept his title because his his shoe came off. His boot actually came it off. Came, came off. Fell. There you go. Number three, CM Punk because of the Rocket John Cena. You can't main event. No, yeah. they can't. Number two, uh, I can kind of see this because really. What was, he was his never in a title feud? Nothing in big enough feud. Yeah, Jake the Snake Roberts. Yeah, number one is ridiculous. But if they would have done it right, yeah, if they would have, you're right. They if they right. would have done it right, he would have been. Because Hogan's always made a bit. Instead, it was Hogan and, and Sid Vicious, Justice, whatever, same guy. Yeah, but you anyway, know who it was? It was Sid that Justice. That guy named Lord Humongous. He's not the original people anyway. And it was Flair against Macho Man. Yeah, it's a I'd much rather event. seen Macho Man and it, it was the title in the main event, but they do that to, uh, all the time. Yeah, now. and they had a better storyline because Savage. I mean, Flair was saying he was he got Elizabeth first. They had go. the fake pictures. They had the whole. There you that, go. that could have been the main but event. But it should have been Hogan and Flair that year. Should've. Why was Sid Justice and Hogan? Because Sid pulled Hogan out of the Royal Rumble Ooh. so Flair could win the title. Ooh. Who cares? I know. People pull no. people out Flair of the room all the time. Should have headlined. Him and Savage should have been the headline I, for I, that WrestleMania. I still think it would have been. It should have been Hogan and Flair as the main event. Yeah, I can't even believe they never had those. They let WCW get that main event. That was stupid. Yeah, you you let one of the top. You had the top guy f for all the years in NWA and WCW, and you had your guy Hogan, and you didn't put them on a main event at WrestleMania. There you go. What are they? <laughs> what they got their finger, their button, and one in their mouth, and they keep switching because. They're not, using, they're not using the brains. They're not using Never the brains. Never use the brains on that one. 
So we're going to go on to Sports Entertainment's 10 Most Ridiculous Rivalries. Number 10 is The Undertaker versus The Underfaker. Yes. Brian hey, Lee. <laughs> Brian Lee main event, main event for <laughs> SummerSlam. There you go. We had Sting and the British Bulldog versus Vader and Sid. Vader and Sid were the masters of the Powerball. That was in WCW. That's when they blew the boat up that Sting and Bur Bulldog were on. <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> oh, Lord. Number eight, the Machines versus the Heenan family. That's when you had the big machine, the giant machine. You had this machine, that machine. Yes, which was one demolition, Big John Stud, and Andre. Andre John. Yes, I know. Number, who was that? Uh, that's that's you. me. Number seven, Glacier and Ernest Miller taking on Wrath and Mortis. Don't you mean um, Mortal Kombat? Yes, and with Ernest Miller thrown in. Somebody call his mama. Well, he did martial arts, I guess. Fits. I don't know. It fits. Number six, Edge versus Booker T. I wanted that Japanese commercial. No, I wanted that Japanese commercial. <laughs> You're ridiculous. It's a Japanese hair commercial, people. Really? I don't think Edge and Booker T use the same products. No. I'm Num just saying. <laughs> Number five, The Ultimate Warrior taking on Papa Shango. That was ridiculous. Yep. Number four, The Ultimate Warrior and Hulk Hogan in WCW. Horrible. Al Snow versus Boss Man. No. Oh, yes. Peppa. Can we have some Peppa, please? Can we have some Peppa? Yeah, they put them in the daggum kennel. steel cages and the kennel, kennel with the pass. dogs. And the dogs are peeing everywhere. And not attacking like those folks do. <laughs> they would scare down to you. You can watch it on the network for <laughs> nine ninety nine. dollars Number two, Sting versus Vampira. I think the Sting got caught on fire at that one. How horrible. And number one, Hulk Hogan versus the Dungeon of Doom. Yes, Kevin Sullivan, that was ridiculous. Next up is 10 superstars who never should have returned to the WWE. Yes. Number 10, Marty Jannetty. No, he shouldn't have. No. Number 9, Albert A. Train. Tensai. Nope. Number 8, Mick Foley. Number 7, Trish Stratus. Oh, why put Trish here? I don't understand the problem with that one. I don't either. Number 6, R. V. D. He, he don't really do nothing now. He don't do nothing. Number five is Mr. Perfect. They could have done a better run with him last. They could have. Number four, so. the Ultimate Warrior from 1996. Number three, the British Bulldog when he came back wearing jeans. I know, very it's weird. weird. Number two, hey yo, Scott Hall. That's right. Number one, Batista. They yeah. tried to make him a face. He didn't. Won yes. the Rumble. And everybody hated it. <laughs> Got Rey Mysterio booed. <laughs> That's right. The 25 next is the most 25 most personal grudge matches in history. We're from doing from 10 to 6. That's right. Number 10, Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio. That's great. Number 9, John Cena versus Edge. Another good one. Number 8, Junkyard Dog versus the Fabulous Freebird. Number 7, Daniel Bryan versus The Authority. And number 6, The Mac and Dream, Dusty Rose Death versus Rose. The Four Horsemen. There you go. And then we've got the 50 greatest stars of WCW history. My favorite list. Number 20, Brian Pillman. I'm glad he's in the top 20. Number 19, The Giant. The Big Show. Number 18, Eddie Guerrero. Number 17, The Enforcer on Anderson. Number 16, the first African-American WCW World Heavyweight Champion, Ron Simmons. Number 15, Stunning Steve Austin. Number 14, that guy that broke his leg <laughs> really, really bad, huh? Sid. Huh? <laughs> Don't call it the top rope seat. <laughs> Number 13, the man of a thousand holds, Dean Malenko. Number 12, hey, yo, <laughs> got you a survey going, Scott Hall. And number 11, Big Van Vader. That's right. And then the 15 to 11, the top 25 hottest divas of all time. Number 15, Michelle McCool. There you go. Number 14, Alita. Number 13, Ariel. Number 12, Ariel. Lena Yada, I don't even know who you are. And Sorry number about. 11, uh, Mickey James. Mickey James. That's going to be it. And that's going to be count this out. week. Yes. yes. We'll have a lot more next week. Uh, you, we know you love it. You come in, you grab our shirts. That's right. Count down, count Screaming down, count down. at us. Call us on the phone. We're getting the calls. We're getting the text. We're getting the emails. We're getting everything. People on the Facebook and on the Twitter. All they say is the countdown. That's right. That's it for this week, folks. For part three, we'll be right back for part four of episode 24 when we talk about the WWE Conspiracy Theory. This week, it'll be Nash and all. Were they sent by Vince to destroy WCW? Could have been. Or maybe Vince Russo later on. Huh. Now Vince, <laughs> maybe Vince has something to do with it. There you go. We'll be right back for part four.